Nigeria's federal character is very important to this unit. You have to understand what it means and how the state utilizes it and what, it, uh, what it's all about. So the, the notion is that Nigeria uses its federalism to address its ethnic, religious, and regional groups. And this is seen in uh, a number of things that, that, uh, that sit in the way Nigeria is organized and how they, they run their federalism and run their state. So you have um, 36 states, so that has grown from 3 to 36, so they've tried to use to increase the number of political bases um, for their uh, nations, various nations. They have provisions in the Constitution that allow senators, therefore, to represent those diverse states so that you have three senators, SMD plurality from each of those states, and therefore you get guaranteed diversity within that. Um, that is complemented by the lower house, the House of Representatives, 360 members, um, each from a single member district based uh, relatively on population. That guarantees that you will get a, a diverse range of representatives um, because the, of the, uh, the locations and the, the way the populations are grouped. And then you also have the presidential electoral method where in addition to winning the national vote, the president must get at least 25% of the vote in two-thirds of Nigeria's 36 states. Um, part of the, we, when we talked about the, just as I'm uh, again thinking here, um, all states must be represented in the cabinet. You know, that's, that's another piece of it um, for sure. And the, the bureaucracy one is a little bit more shaky on federalism because it's about ethnic groups. Um, but uh, all groups uh, must be represented in the bureaucracy uh, similar to what their population is in the general population. Um, so the bureaucracy, wow, try that again. Bureaucracy gets very bloated. Um, lots of corruption. People are given jobs to um, ensure loyalty and to reward people um, from various ethnic groups and religions. Legislatively, there is a competition via zero sum over government resources. And so uh, with the factions and with that zero sum mentality, you do get gridlock even though uh, Nigeria does have a uh, majority party right now with the APC in both houses, or they do as of May of 2019. Um, Yara Dua, like we said, died in um, 2010. Good luck, Jonathan, his Southern Christian vice president, picked up the uh, presidential mantle then and served out the remainder of that term. Election 2011 came along and Jonathan said he'd run. Northern Muslims were very displeased about this because they had already had eight years of the Southern Christian Abbasanjo through 2007. But good luck went away with it, or went uh, on with it anyway. And the Northern Muslim vote really got split between the traditional Northern Muslim party, the All Nigeria People's Party, with Ibrahim Shikaru as their standard bearer, and the brand new party, the uh, relatively liberal reform, uh, anti-corruption party, the Congress for Progressive Change, featuring former military leader Muhammadu Buhari. And so this is the uh, election um, where we saw good luck win the, uh, the election. The Northern Muslims split their vote here, and our friend Nuhu Ribadu, uh, he of Stand Up for Nigeria, did not fare particularly well because uh, a lot of people in Nigeria at that point believed in good luck, apparently. And that's how the election went. Um, after that, there came to be a new coalition. You need to know this for sure. The All Progressives Congress was the party that was born, and it was the three major opposition parties who did come together. And again, not natural bedfellows, all of them for sure, but you had the Action Congress of Nigeria, the All Nigeria People's Party, and then the Congress for Progressive Change. They banded together essentially to defeat the PDP. Um, and they formed this new party, got a bunch of defections from the PDP early on. Governors, the members of the House, were defecting to the APC, and then the APC would win the presidency, both houses of the legislature in both 2015 and 2019. Meanwhile, good luck Jonathan was trying to shore up support for him. He tried to capitalize, much like Putin did in Russia, on Nigeria's... Um, 
anti-gay attitudes. And so there was a 2014 law that banned same-sex relationships in Nigeria, including no, no attending or organizing um, any gay groups, uh, attending any gay organization, even if it's private. The possibility was to have up to 14 years in prison. And to remember, 98% of Nigerians said uh, homosexuality was unacceptable in the poll, um, as it were stated. So um, Nigerians very conservative when it comes to LGBTQ plus issues. Um, and a lot of beatings, jailings, and persecution. Remember in class we talked about the, uh, the roving gang in Abuja beating um, gay and lesbian people with the nail-studded clubs and, uh, and so on. So um, not cool at all on Good Luck Jonathan's part there and um, the, the Nigerian state um, persecuting people pretty significantly. Boko Haram provided the biggest challenge from a state stability standpoint, and it, it has been the biggest military operation since the Biafran War from 1967 to 70. The, the battle against Boko Haram there, uh, it has included a state of emergency in three northeastern states um, back in 2013, and there has been a lot of military goings on. The Nigerian state did not act effectively against Boko Haram early on. Um, and good luck, Jonathan, was seen as being too slow, too timid, and that is uh, one of the reasons that Buhari was uh, going to be able to win in 2015. The attacks largely set in the northeast of Nigeria against opposition groups. Uh, you also see uh, some attacks in the south, some attacks in the middle belt, but um, again, the most intense con concentration very much in the northeast. And we have the, uh, the kidnappings of the 274 girls or 276 girls um, from northeastern Nigeria. And that was the tragedy that rocked the world. And um, like we always say, for, for a short time anyway, before our attention turned elsewhere. But that um, stunned Nigeria. It brought out the Bring Back Our Girls uh, movement. And good luck, Jonathan acted extremely slowly uh, in regard to this. He didn't make a public statement for days and days and days and days, and the public uh, lost a lot of faith in him and confidence in him. Maybe it was the last straw. And so Muhammadu Buhari has been um, put, the, put the girls front and center, and he has gained the release of some of them. Some of the girls have escaped, but Buhari very much um, has said, hey, we this is the tragedy, and I'm going after them, and I won't rest until all of them are back. And so that at least earned him the, the uh, respect of Nigerians who wanted to see more action taken toward the, uh, the missing girls. So the election of 2015 did go to Muhammadu Buhari. The substantial piece of this election that you uh, have to understand is that it was the First time in Nigerian history that an incumbent president was defeated. Good luck, Jonathan. The incumbent president lost to the uh, APC rival, Buhari. And it was an election in which Good Luck Jonathan peacefully conceded and uh, um, stepped aside. And those two things in Nigeria really hadn't happened from an electoral. Well, they not really hadn't happened. They hadn't happened from an electoral process standpoint before. So good luck, Jonathan, saying, hey, the, the peace of the country is more important than my political future. Give him credit for stepping aside there. Buhari took over in 2015, um, and it was so deja vu here because Buhari, within a couple of years of being president, um, started to leave the country because he was ill. He wasn't seen for some long stretches. It felt just like Yara Dua, Buhari, um, was not in Saudi Arabia like Buhari or uh, like Yaradua had been for treatment. But Buhari was in England getting treatment, and so there were all sorts of uh, well, there were some conspiracy theories for sure, and lots of people saying this is unbelievable. Another Muslim president, another Muslim president gets sick. What if he dies? Then there will be a Christian vice president assuming the office again, and Buhari has persevered. Uh, to this point. So Buhari won the election. It was a big deal back in 2015 because of that shift. A lot of high hopes and uh, it continues under him to um, Nigeria. It continues to see um, progress. And there you see, it's a good uh, map comparison here in terms of what happened in 2011 and 2015. 
almost a straight north-south um, vote in 2011 where you had Buhari win the north and good luck Jonathan win the south um, in 2011. And in 2015, you see, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting all choked up about this election. Um, Buhari won a bunch of uh, territory down here. So in Yoruba territory, a bigger Muslim population, Buhari was able to um, to win a bunch more votes there. So 2019 brought questions about whether Buhari would run again. He had been sick, and people were wondering if this aging former military dictator was going to be healthy enough to go. He said absolutely. And his main rival became uh, this gentleman, Atiku Abu Bakr, from the PDP, from former vice president, um, under Yara Dua. Jeez, I think it was under Yara Dua. No, I'm not totally sure about that. Check that last statement. And um, that was the, it was a relatively foregone conclusion, I think, that Buhari would win. Some people thought Abu Bakr was, uh, was going to give him um, a real run for his money, but Buhari was declared the victor um, in February of 2019. And you had the PDP also uh, lose uh, more seats in the legislature, so the APC re-won the presidency and they uh, re um, they um, re-up their seats in the legislature and uh, gain a majority. So, um, in the Senate and the uh, uh, and the House. So, that is Nigeria um, as of now, as of May of 2019, with the election just a few months ago. And Nigeria is still seeking to solve all those issues that we've talked about. Fourth Republic uh, policy challenges. One of those really is how do you produce unity and legitimacy for the state in Nigeria? Um, and what's real. So it's good for you to think about, is it tradition? Is it uh, long-term stable governance like the United Kingdom? Is it national unity somehow, like in Mexico? Is it possible to have one-party stability that hasn't uh, proven to be successful with the PDP or the APC? Um, if people were able to feel like their individual rights and liberties were uh, uh, protected, representative government was utilized like in the United States. Perhaps that could do it. Um, they can't do Islamic unity like the Iranians have because if, of the uh, uh, multi-religious population in Nigeria. Ideologically, and uh, living standards improvement like in China, that would seem to be possible if that were um, tangibly improving people's lives and they did so in a pragmatic way. You might see um, some more unity then. The charismatic leadership always is possibility if you have governance that is uh, efficacious and pragmatic. Um, if the rule of law is out there, if it's rational legal, uh, rational legal rule eventually, and then if you can cut down on the corruption and have honesty in government, maybe it's several of these things, maybe it's one of them, uh, but Nigeria still battles for it. And Nigeria also battles the, uh, the, the capitalist model. Um, from a globalization standpoint, the destructive versus not destructive um, argument about this, the destructive um, element of this says that the, you know imposing the free market uh, leads to the dependency theory, you know the dependence of the southern states on the northern states, too much profit, uh, wages are kept down, there's a resistance to taxes by multinational corporation, abuse of environmentalism. Um, cultures get undermined as they are run roughshod over. Domestic industry um, is replaced by multinationals. Profit gets repatriated back to the mother country rather than the uh, being uh, beneficial to the um, developing country, if you will. And the uh, other side of the, the, the coin there would argue, if coins argue, that uh, there is free trade involved and that promotes uh, better goods for all and better economic situations for all. Jobs are provided. You get national economic growth. There's more competition, which will lead to more efficiency and better choices and uh, better options. Um, people do get more choice. People act in their self-interest, um, which can be um, positive if done in a, in a, uh, in a non-selfish um, way, if you will. That's poorly said. And on the whole, Overall prosperity would get um, increased, but again, uh, definitely uneven with the social class cleavages that go along with it. In Nigeria, 
still wrestles with this, as so many countries do, um, that continue to wrestle for more development the, about um, how do you uh, move forward economically and, uh, and avoid the pitfalls of, of both of these things.